Good evening guys, vast 3 d here and tonight we're going to take a look at my wall anchor setup on my VZBot. Stay tuned. So this started when I started pushing on speed printing with high acceleration, crazy speed. I quickly realized I was kind of a, whoa, wait a second, I got a I got an issue. Um, the printer was dancing. The printer was was not stable, and uh, I wanted to find a way to stabilize the whole thing because I was clearly having issues on print quality. Then I saw a video on on CNC Kitchen from from Stefan, and the video was great. He was using um, a concrete slab or a uh, a patio or deck uh, concrete slab. I, I think that's the good word. And uh, on, on, on there, there was some foaming and that was allowing the printer to move as a whole. And he explains it very good in his video. So that, that's what I tried. I, I, I actually I had some, some, some of that concrete slabs uh, in the background. So I've put my printer on it and went again and uh, I still had issues. So it was way better, but not perfect. Um, simply because I, at that time I was still running the old uh, X5S bed assembly. And that was a crappy bed assembly with uh, eight millimeters smooth rod on the sides. And, and the whole bed frame was just uh, way not stiff enough to, to, to do crazy acceleration. So I started all, all kinds of, of, of uh, ideas. I, I've installed the uh, palm wheels to stabilize the whole bed and that kind of helped as well, but it was still not perfect. Then I just said, well, screw that. Let's not let the printer move as a whole because the idea behind that is, is very good is you, you, um, uh, you dampen vibration from the whole printer. And if the whole printer moves as a whole, like the bed is moving at the same time as the print head and everything is moving as a whole, it's better, except when it's violently shaking, you know, crazy acceleration, everything shakes. And the issue I had was the bed itself was crazy, crazy moving. So I just thought, let's just bolt that thing down to the wall. And clearly it, it fixed all my, my issues. Um, and then came O-Drive. O-Drive was, <laughs> this this setup was, was even more crazy because the inertia on those beefy motors, um, they were, I tried without it. I I came back to that same idea. Try to put it, uh, put the printer on the slab and and with some foam on there. But the printer, <laughs> the printer was dancing really hard, and uh, it wanted to just drop off the table. So I just said, yeah, screw that. Let's stick to the idea of bolting it to the wall and 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 go like that. So um, that brought me here today. Um, since you see, this is my new print room that I've renovated cool studio <laughs> or studio and then that's where my 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 vz button now is and it's bolted to wall again and i wanted tonight to make some um vibrations measurement or resonance measurement on both the print head and the bed because uh i think i've i've never done this i've never calculated or, or measured the effect of on wall anchors on 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 the bed um i did of course on on the print head, but never on the bed. And I think it's as more, it's as much important uh, to have a stable bed than it is to have a, a stable printer, a stable print head. Because even if your, your, your top gain tree is on the core XY, I'm talking about, the, about my VZ butt. On the core XY, the print head is on top. And if the bottom is also shaking on the bed, you're gonna get the same crazy artifacts that you get, um, even if you tune input shaper. So, um, I decided to take measurement on the bed. So I'm going to show you uh, the result that I've uh, that I've measured uh, on both wall mounted, not wall mounted, and then uh, we can compare those results. So here are the results that I've uh, measured, and you'll see it's 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 pretty obvious that it was helping.
let's take a look at the results from my measurements that I've uh, used with the accelerometer. But before we go there, let me just mention that I'm nowhere near an expert, uh, nor do I pretend that I understand this um, like a professional. <laughs> so take these information um, with a bit of salt. I'm, I'm just going to share you what I think happened, but that's about it. Um, so let's take a look. First of all, uh, the measurement on, on the x-axis, on the printhead, uh, left side you'll see is always no wall anchor and on the side on the right side is with wall anchors and and right away just looking at those graphs you're probably going to say hey it looks it looks worse on on the right um you have uh you have a a, a, a uh, an uglier uglier graph but hey, let's take a look at it first we have the scale on the right so on on the left i was hitting 2.7 2.8 maybe on the power spectral density at a scale of 1 E4. What that means on top, and this value, uh, some people forget to, to, to take a look at that. What that means, 1 E4 is the scientific way of, of uh, uh, calling uh, numbers. So it means just add 40 after your value. So 2.5 add 40. On, on the right side, same thing, 1 E4. But we are hitting a little bit under 2 when we were on 2.78 on the left. So we got a bit of an improvement, um, not a lot, but um, the x-axis is also the lightest axis of both. But still, there's an improvement, definite improvement. Now you're going to say, hey, look at that. There's a second spike at around 130 hertz on both sides, and it looks worse on the right side. But no, um, let's take a look again at the scale. We're hitting around uh, 1. The, the, the spike is at around 1, but a little under. So 0 0.9 on the green one. Same thing goes on the left side. A little under uh, 1 and a little above 1 for the, the other color. Which means this part didn't help. That's uh, another um, resonance that I can't fix. I don't know what that is, but it's happening since I've switched the belt uh, to another vendor. I was using genuine gates before. Now I'm using, uh, I think they're called Ruthex or, or something like that. Um, the brand is uh, Big Tree Tech. They're, they're pretty good quality belts, but since then, I think they're more rigid than gates. That's, that, that may be an explanation to why I'm seeing that I was not seeing before. But now, take a look at um, the y-axis, which is the axis that has the more weight on it. Interesting results. On the left, no wall. I was hitting uh, 1.6, 1.65, but then take a look at that scale, 1 E5. That means 5, 0 after that 165. So that's kind of a, a lot. And then on the right side, it went down to 7, but 7 plus 4, 0. So it, it went down drastically. The scale here is 1 E4. So again, it, it, it helped on the Y even more than on the X. So yeah, this is pretty cool to see. Um, and now if you take a look uh, all between the graphs, the, the acceleration um, and the recommended shaper, this always stays about the same. Uh, sometimes I've done many, many measurements. Sometimes it's going to be better. They're going to say more acceleration on, on wall anchors, sometimes on the no wall anchor, but it's always very 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 similar in the same range plus minus couple hundreds so that didn't affect that now let's take a look at the the bed this is a a, a bed measurement i took while i was doing a a x measurement on the left take a look at that we hit 2.2.67 2.8 uh, maybe on the right we're a little under one um, so definite improvement again, we're on the same scale, 1, E2, add 2, 0 after that number. Now, again, you're probably going to notice those spikes after uh, that, around 100 and 125 hertz. But if you take a look at the power spectral density that they give you, um, it's not going above 0 0.7. And on the right side, on the left side, um, if you take the... the um, the average, it's around 1.3, I mean 0 0.3, and then same thing on the left. So this part has not changed. 
a huge difference on, 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 on the spike that we're interested in. So this was the X. Now, if we take a look at Y, um, whoa, my print screen went weird. <laughs> anyway, um, on the left, again, we're hitting one point, maybe 1.2 um, or 3. Um, but take a look at the scale, 1 E3 at 3, 0. On the right, 1 E2, that's about 10 times lower vibration or, or resonance vibration. So that's that's crazy. That's there. There's a big improvement right there. Um, so that that has kind of a um, told me I was I was kind of right to bolt it to wall. There's there's less vibration, definite less vibration vibration, either on the print head and on the print bed. Now um, something more interesting would be to place the sensor on the actual frame and see and see what that does as well. I, I, I didn't do that test, but here are my results. Again, I'm nowhere near a specialist there, <laughs> but um, also quality wise, it went, it went better. I mean, uh, there, there's less artifact. Um, if you try to go ultra crazy with, with, <laughs> without wall anchors, I'm telling you, you're gonna notice uh, crappy quality. Uh, it, it's, it's gonna ring, it's gonna be, it's not going to be good quality. Um, you can test that yourself and, and, and come back and comment down below what are your, your results. I would be very, very interested in, in knowing what you get if you, if you wall anchor the printer. But on my side, uh, definite, definite improvement. So that's it. That was my results. So uh, that, that was it. That was my results. But there's, there's more. There's more. Um, so just to show you this, this is the left wall anchor. This one is... Uh, Pivoting, so when I remove the printer, it's easy to just uh, flip it. And there's two more in the back. They can see there. Um, but I wanted to show you something else. I've done other tests as well, um, comparing silicon spacers versus springs, and there's a definite big improvement going uh, to bed silicon spacers versus the spring ones. And the, the silicon spacer they act as vibration dampener. As well so that's another good thing to do if you're if you're if you're um, running something with springs switch to silicon spacers that's gonna help and then another test I've done is um, what's gonna happen if you if you go with um, a triple Z or or less I mean right now I'm running one two three four five six there's six supports for the bed um, I've tried with four and measure I've tried with three simulating, just keeping the first two and the one in the back, like I was doing a a, a triple Z, and and the vibration went up pretty good, significant improvement. I mean, not improvement, significant uh, downgrade. <laughs> um, but that being said, I was still on 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 silicon spacers, so I'm I'm wondering what what would happen on a on a printer like a a a, a rat rig V core where it's directly metal to metal and there's no there's no rubber to damp damp to dampen the vibration. Um, that that's something I would be interested in 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 seeing. I mean, if people want to comment below and they want to do some test. Um, that's that's something really cool that we can all share together and that way maybe we're gonna find some more way of improving our prints um, so I just uh, I, I wish I could have shown you the results I'm I'm just stupid I've spent the last 30 minutes trying to figure out where I've put those files but I must have deleted them somehow or or moved them to some place that I can't remember I just can't find them and I wanted to do them again but I miss a bit of time right now. It's getting late and I've spent already too much time on this. <laughs> I just wanted to show you uh, the wall mount. Then I got into bed springs and then uh, I simulated this uh, triple Z and uh, that took way too much time. Anyway, I hope you appreciated it. I hope that you could learn something. And um, if I was completely wrong, again, that is a total possibility. <laughs> I'm nowhere near an expert. Um, I'm just uh, going through experimenting and, and my findings and here they are and this is what I got. I definitely got better prints, that's for sure. Um, but how much is it impacting it? I'm telling you, if you print something, uh, yeah, one more thing. If, if, you, if you don't 
anchor the printer at super high acceleration and the printer is dancing. Now imagine when you have a print that is super tall and the bed goes down here and the whole printer is shaking. That part will also shake. It will also move. And, and if you take a look at um, like something when, when they simulate a earthquake on a building, on tall building, the bed is shaking and then you see the whole building shaking and, and the top here, and I'm going to try to find a video, yeah, let's, let's take a look at that video. The, the top of the building is actually shaking on the opposite direction than the, the base, the hurt, the ground. So you can see same principle or same physics applies when you when you print something big and and the printer moves and the printer shakes. Um, you're gonna have quality issues um, if you print taller prints and you don't stabilize the printer somehow. Even if you do um, put it on a concrete slab and put dampers on there, the printer's still gonna move, and and the printed part has its own mass, and this will also move and it will it will it will cause printing printing quality I'm, I'm pretty sure at least that's what i've tested here um now again if you want to test it yourself i'd be i'd be really interesting to hear what you have to say so on this uh i wish you all a good night thanks again for watching thanks for being there all the time and uh i wish you a good night and see you on the next one good night everyone see you later